My name is Ann Blunser, the Executive Director at the Beaufort County Open Land Trust, and I'm thrilled to death to welcome you tonight to the Land Trust's first lecture series, and tonight's focus is going to be Allbrass, a southern plantation. Many of you know, um, because I've met you today from all over the country, um, people from Michigan and L.A. and Tennessee and North Carolina and D.C., um, you came from all over the country um, and you know what a special and unique treat we have here in Beaufort County um, with Frank Lloyd Wright's Albrecht Plantation. We want to thank you so much for coming tonight and supporting our cause. We're excited about the speakers that we have. They're going to share their expertise with you a little bit. Um, a little bit about our land trust and I think it is only fitting um, that this organization is the nonprofit uh, that gets to support this because I think that Frank Lloyd Wright would have agreed with our mission, um, which is to preserve the natural beauty of this magnificent place we call the Low Country. I know everyone here agrees with that, and I think that his plantation, um, more than any piece of architecture, really resembles that um, in this county. And so we're glad that you're here to, to share that with us today and know that you support it or you wouldn't be here. Um, a little bit of shameless marketing for a moment. Um, you saw when you walked in the Albrass Southern Plantation book, um, David, of course, is here tonight to speak with us. That is the last printing um, of the book. We, were man we managed to order the last 200. Um, there are about 10 of them left outside, so on your way out, please feel free to buy one of those. Um, also, a few other things you probably saw. The Land Trust Cookbook, which has been in its eighth printing now for over 30 years, a magnificent collaboration of all kinds of great recipes from local cooks and chefs and mothers and daughters and fathers. Um, great gift. It's only 20 bucks. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. Probably half of the, the authors of these recipes are, are sitting in this audience tonight. And our all brass bags. Um, Joel Silver personally approved these, um, and on that note, it is appropriate to our greatest, greatest amount of gratitude that this organization and community can put forth is to Mr. Joel Silver for allowing our organization to host the tour out there every other year. It is a huge, huge piece of how this organization works. It truly is. I don't think people realize um, what this means for our organization and how it helps us protect all the scenic vistas in and around Beaufort and even moving now into protecting more land inland um, to improve everybody's quality of life. Um, it's not just about the scenic vista anymore. We've got to protect acreage all over the county um, to make sure that our drinking water, our air that we breathe, that everything's protected. Um, and without Mr. Silver and his generosity of opening up his private home um, to a lot of people for a whole weekend, we couldn't do it. So thank you so much, Joel, and I would like for everyone to please give him a shout out. his dedicated uh, staff, Margaret Martin and Scott McNair, who um, their endless, endless efforts year long working with us and our committee uh, make this possible. So you're out there somewhere and we really appreciate all that you do working with us. So help us support that cause. This is only $10 with a great little bag. Um, we've got plenty of them. Buy one, buy two, buy three on your way out. We really appreciate it. Um, on this note, I'm going to introduce our first speaker for the evening. He will speak for about 45 minutes, then Mr. Tom Cruise will come up and we will take questions at the end if you have any questions for the two of them. Um, we are very privileged to have Mr. DeLong here this evening. He's trapped from Pennsylvania. Um, he lives on the West Coast as well, part-time, so this is a, a big commitment to, to get him down to Little Buford. Um, he is the author of Albrass the Southern Plantation. Um, he has a master's in architecture degree from the University of Pennsylvania. He studied with Louis Kahn, has his PhD in architectural history from Columbia University. He continues to teach as a professor emeritus at the University of Penn. Um, some other things that I think are, should be noted and that, that people would enjoy to know are he has a plethora of books out there um, about uh, architecture and specifically Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, out of the Ordinary, with about Robert Venturi and Denise Scott Brown, Frank Lloyd Wright in the Living City, Frank Wright Designs for American Landscape, um, Louis Kahn in the Realm of Architecture, All Brass, Frank Lloyd Wright Southern Plantation, of course is the one that, that, we're, that, we, are, uh, that we have here tonight. Um, he also held a Fulbright and a Guggenheim Fellowship. 
um, and is also was uh, a resident in historic preservation at the American Academy in Rome. Um, we truly are lucky, you really count yourself lucky to sit in the seat that you are tonight because he's going to be able to share with us some fascinating information and pictures um, about Albrecht. So without much further ado, Mr. Don. Thank you for the generous introduction, and it's it's good to be back in this part of the country in Beaufort, and especially at Old Brass, where I've spent quite a bit of time. Uh, I first laid eyes on Old Brass in 1987 and took these pictures. It was a largely forgotten building and in a ruinous state, and I'd come down under rather interesting circumstances. Edgar Kaufman, whose parents built Falling Water, suggested I write a book on Old Brass, and he arranged for Victoria Newhouse, whose husband owns Condé Nast, to charter a plane so we could fly down directly from New York. And uh, Joel had arranged for a police escort from the Savannah airport. <laughs> so it was all quite spectacular, and we drove down a rutted road, and this is what we found. It was cl clearly a largely forgotten estate. And I wondered at the moment if there was any real reason to study it. Obviously, for me, there was. Uh, largely, this had for me to do with discovering how Frank Lloyd Wright would approach the design of a southern plantation. Now, he practiced for 70 years. He lived until almost age 93. And during that long career of 70 years of practice, he designed around a thousand buildings, but only one southern plantation. But there were a lot of questions remaining. Why would the buildings so elaborately angle? Why did they have inclined walls? Were these simply reflections of an idiosyncratic approach, as many have accused Wright of approaching design as a way of doing things? But what I hope to demonstrate is that they do relate to deeper principles, which I worked to discover. And it was research that went on for quite a while. It involved many trips to Old Brass during various stages of the restoration. It involved visits to various archives of Frank Lloyd Wright materials, interviews with the owners and their families, interviews with Wright's apprentices, some of whom had worked on the house, supervised new photography for the book, Anthony Perez, Alan Weintraub, Paul Richelieu, and David Soliday all have images which we used. During that time, I wrote two other books on Wright that examined other aspects of his career. And finally, I wrote the story of Old Brass itself, of its original client, of its site, of its initial design and construction, of its changing fortunes, and of its current, and still, in a way, ongoing <coughs> rescue and development. As well known, Wright was one of the founders of what we call modern architecture, as we can see in the Martin House in Buffalo of 1904, which doesn't look very much like Old Brass. But by that time, by the turn of the century, Wright had indeed created what we now call modern architecture. He reconfigured interior space. You can see this in the plan, a series of dotted lines, a series of open interiors. So that interiors, instead of being an assemblage of compartmented spaces, became a flowing, continuous volume. And walls were treated as freestanding screens. And buildings were more effectively linked with their surroundings. That's the basis of all modern architecture and was influential in the development of modern architecture and the international style in Europe. We can claim this as America's gift. In his larger compositions, such as the Midway Gardens in Chicago of 1914, 